Don't at me, I know it doesn't look like anything, but it's the vibe. Okay, listen, there has been a core memory that has been recently activated. Something that I buried deep, deep in my Tumblr era brain that has resurfaced when I was scrolling on Instagram the other day. So if you know anything about 2013, you know about the personification of websites, of brands, of internet providers. This image of if websites were people had a chokehold on my 13 year old self. And I know it had a chokehold on you too. We can even go deeper into my obsessions. I was into casual princesses. We're in gender bent Disney princesses and princes. Anime versions of beloved Disney characters. Trust me, the rabbit hole goes deep, but that's not what we're here to talk about. We're here to talk about how the other day I was scrolling on Instagram and I saw Wisdom's retelling of SpongeBob through his fashion. And that sparked just a little gear in the in the cog machine of my brain of reliving my Tumblr days. And then what the icing on the cake was is that I saw not soon afterwards an artist that I really love, Ramon, I saw his his personification of like animals that he has. He has like personifications of birds in like really cool character designs. And then one plus one equals two and I experienced consciousness for the first time in my adult life. So I took it to my Discord to ask for suggestions on what I should make. And I decided to nurture my inner child and create a fun personification of marine animals. Cause when was the last time I did something fun while recording myself? So I go through a couple of marine animals and sketches before I decide on them. But in the end, I decide to go with a jellyfish, a sea urchin and a stingray because I think they have all different colors and textures and that's kind of what I was going for. And I also wanted to be kind of fashion based because I really like playing with fashion in my character designs and I'm not necessarily doing like straight up different types of characters based on this. It's less of a character design exercise and more of like a fun doodle thing that I enjoy doing. But this is also a really great character design exercise if you're looking at stretching your your pencil muscles, your drawing muscles. Before we get started, let me tell you about today's sponsor. Like I always say, more is more. Bold, eye-catching, maximalism. Filmora just introduced six effects packs that allow maximalists to create bold stickers and backgrounds in their content. Boring content no more! And let me show you how it's possible. All right, so you wanna elevate your maximalistic content with Wondershare from Mora. So you gotta download the maximalism, maximalism effects packs. All right, step one is easy because we already have Filmora, right? But first you gotta know your style. There's so many different packs. There's there's really text-based, there's retro ones, there's really modern ones, really graphic ones. So, so you gotta know that. Next, I'm using the AI cutout tool, my favorite tool, and I'm cutting myself out nice and easy peasy so I can plop myself right on top of these backgrounds. But it's not only backgrounds and titles and headers, there's also a lot of cool stickers that you can play around with just to, to more subtly elevate your game. So download Filmora 12 and try out the effects packs for free through the link in my bio. Thank you Filmora for sponsoring this video. Now let's get back to drawing. Step one, starting with the sketches. So how I start this process is I'm going to make three characters, right? And I do them all simultaneously because well, I guess I like suffering and it's not about feeding your inner child, it's about giving your inner child what it doesn't deserve. And that's a break. Doing all three at the same time, I had the idea for this jellyfish character last night and I really wanted to go for it first. Usually when I'm drawing this quickly, it's because I know exactly what I want to draw. In the other ones, I kind of not really sure which direction I need to go in and I kind of play around with them a little bit more before settling on a sketch. Like at first I wanted to do a puffer fish and a sea turtle and you know I wanted a puffer jacket with these spikes and stuff like that and I end up changing it to a sea urchin just because the colors of a sea urchin I feel like it's a little bit more fun and different than the other colors for rather than like a puffer fish. And then I had a lobster and the lobster excited me because it's red and also because they have these like antennas like these two little things on their head and I thought that would be cool for like a hair piece or something. But then the lobster puffer was too similar to the puffer fish. So I ended up scrapping the, the lobster design and trying something new. So then I Google what a stingray looks like because you know, it has some really cool patterns, like some cool wiggle design stuff when it swims. And I thought that would be a really cool um, to incorporate that. And also I wanted maybe like the ponytail to be this sharp, stingray point, right? It's a long pointy stingray tail, right? So these were the four sketches I ended up with. 
Step two, rough coloring. So I have my three sketches and it's time to tighten it up a little bit, time to add some rough colors. And you know, it's easiest when you have these three drawings next to each other, because then you can make sure the composition is all different. All the colors are different, but cohesive. And actually it's a lot faster. I find to do all three pieces at the same time, but you know, I suppose it's at the cost of maybe it being rushed a little bit and not as finessed as I, would like it but I'm also going into this knowing that I'm gonna keep it loose sketchy and it's just a fun activity so I don't really I'm not too stressed about it so I start with this first character I wanted her long locks to kind of emulate that jellyfish um, strings coming out of them and you know I wanted the hat and the hair to really be the main silhouette of this jellyfish so the hair is coming out of the hat and that's the silhouette that we're looking for and then for this next character, and I want it to be clear. I thought that'd be cool, like a vinyl clear pink thing. And then for the middle character, Sea Urchin, you know, a pop of yellow on the interior of his design. I thought that would be super dope. So I moved on to the third character. And then I was also not happy with this third character. Her pose was way too similar to the first characters. So I kind of changed it up and I also kind of changed up the body type because especially I wanted that hair to be a really sharp point and it didn't feel like I was giving that sharp point while she was sitting. So I changed it to be a little bit more editorial, it'll maybe a little bit more high fashion. And you know, I think the third one turned out the, the least good. I don't know, you tell me your favorites in the end. And after I have all three of them colored, I played with the gradient tool and background colors and then I'm ready to move on the next step. Next up, rendering. So now that I have my base colors ready, I'm just gonna throw a layer on top of everything and I'm gonna just, you know, I'm gonna go for it. In the end, I kind of realized that it's a little bit too bright. I really like bright colors, but at what cost? So I end up kind of muting this center character just a little bit. I like the girls to be really bright, but I feel like it'd be a little bit more masculine if he had some more dark elements. Like you see the reference image, the sea urchin, like the center is like black and the outside is like pink and purple. So I, I play a little bit with that. And I'm just like coloring straight on top of the layers because I'm keeping it loose, keeping it rough, not really stressed about it. But this character made me have a run for my money this, uh, I had a, I had a, like, I wanted her to have a vinyl clear jacket at first. And then I was like, oh, maybe I have to play around with the jellyfish shapes. So I kind of gave her this funky, I have no idea how this shirt works kind of thing. I was using a lot of inspiration of like haute couture from Pinterest that I was finding of like really organic shapes and stuff. But in the end, this outfit was really not cohesive. Like the body cons, bodysuit thing was way too bright and it took away from the main focus which was supposed to be her her hat and her jacket so I end up you know after day one this is this is like hour three almost of doing this I took a rest overnight and I came back with a fresh idea so I ended up changing this all a little bit so it doesn't look that way <laughs> Also, I'm going to this character next. And, you know, I was having a lot of difficulty with her big shoulder piece. There was like no intent behind it. And there was, I had no freaking idea what I was gonna, how I was gonna make that look the way I wanted to make it look. So this is day two. So I'm going back and I'm changing up this whole character and I'm trying to find my layers because these layers are out of whack. So I want her hair to be the main focal point of her jellyfish design. So that's what I do. I add some like squiggles pieces to add to her hair. And then I try to make her bodysuit um, blend in a little bit more so it doesn't stand out. It's not the focal point. The jacket and the hat and her hair is the focal point. I add a lot of cool rim lights and highlights to her vinyl pieces to make it really feel shiny and see-through and the material that I'm looking for. And then I go in to this character, the center character. And I am doing what I said, I'm making him darker. I'm making the jacket seem a little bit more tough and spooky. I don't want this to come across as juvenile and stuff. I want it to look pretty cool and high fashion, but I still love color. I love color. And I don't want to compromise on that. So I'm just uh, muting and toning it down a little bit so then the colors can pop a lot more. 
with this character. This is the second day, so I had some time to think about it. So I am thinking about what I can possibly do to her hair because she doesn't look stingray enough. Like there is no, like the shapes of her shoulder and maybe the patterns and stuff is a little stingray, but it also doesn't feel au contour enough. So I kind of change the silhouette, make her neck piece really high, also make her um, bodysuit come up a little bit higher at her hips. And in the end, like, yeah, maybe this doesn't look entirely like a stingray, but you know, this isn't America's Next Top Model. This is me drawing for a little bit of fun. <laughs> So I'm trying to do some weird stuff to her shoulder pads and I know it didn't turn out. Don't at me, I know it doesn't look like anything, but it's the vibe. It's all about the vibe, it's all about what it makes you feel and it doesn't make me feel like a stingray, but you know, we're working on it. And I also gave her pointy fingers things because I thought that that would kind of help with the stingray idea, like if it's not in her hair, then maybe I'll give the sting point to the ends of her fingers. And I add some room lights. Usually I'm not much of a lighting kind of gal, but I feel like this character lacked enough that I could save it maybe with some lighting. And then because she had lighting, I had to put lighting on the rest of the characters to try to, you know, make them cohesive and stuff. And with this character, you know, in the end, nothing really turned out like how I had in my head, but it's, it's fine and life moves on. And that's what's important here. And that's about the rendering process. Last step, making edits. So like I said, I was not really happy with how things really turned out. So what I did is I ended up just merging everything and liquefying the heck out of it to try to create um, a more interesting silhouette, try to make some colors pop, add some shadows, throw it in black and white, see how things work. I want to make this character's hips pop out more so her pose is a little bit more dynamic. And also like playing around with her jacket. I was thinking that, you know, um, an opposite angle from her hips could make it, you know, really more dynamic and more interesting. And this is me flicking back and forth, seeing like if I like it better or not. Fixing up little details this is always my favorite thing to do at the end of a piece is just seeing how much I can push it. And this is really my favorite part of the process of painting is merging everything together and just making a whole new layer to see how much I can push it, see how I can improve it and decide that I finally like it. And I definitely like it more than I had it before. So here's kind of a flick between before and after. You know, if you've seen my critiquing videos, I love just fixing shit. I love fixing my own art and doing a before and after. It's really, it really shows you how much you can improve your own pieces when you see it a little bit more objectively. You see it from the perspective that I didn't draw this, how can I make this better? That's how I end up fixing and saving my pieces in the end. Okay, so now I'm done. Let's take a look at my three anthropomorphized anim animals, marine creatures, things. This jellyfish character is maybe my favorite. She had a lot of trials and tribulations, but in the end, I think she came through, she pulled through, she slayed. I think the silhouette works pretty well. It's high fashion. It's a simple nod to jellyfish, something that you could wear at the beach perhaps. And I think the colors really work well. Next, we have a sea urchin. This is a dope coat and I definitely want it. I want to be him. I want to hang out with him, but perhaps not too close. I'll get poked in the eye. If I didn't have my reference image, I think I would be able to tell that this is based off a sea urchin. And I think that means that it is successful. And I think the coloring really helps and I love his spiky little hair. And then finally we have the stingray. And I think maybe this is the least successful one, just maybe because the color, like I'm trying to really pop out the stingray colors from this image particularly. But when you actually look at stingrays, they're pretty gray with just a couple of those fluorescent dots. So I'm not sure if this screams stingray. I'm trying to do it to try to get those swirly kind of looks and maybe the ponytail. But at the end of the day, maybe this is more of a high fashion piece rather than a stingray based piece. So I really want to know what you think. Which piece is your favorite? Which piece do you think that I nailed the prompt the most? And I'd love to hear your suggestions on what you think I should personify next. But don't make me personify websites because that will awaken something inside me. Like I said, great exercise for character design if that's what you're into. And if you do end up doing character design exercise like this, there's a channel on my Discord for all the homework I give out to my patrons. And I give feedback and it's, it's a lot of fun. So thanks for watching this video and thank you for helping me feed my inner child. All right, Bye.